Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to do some really fun coloring on foam flowers, and I hope you'll stay tuned. Well, if you've never seen uh, Foam Iran, it's a very, very thin, well, I had a piece of it right here. It's a very, very thin foam. It's not like the foam you get in stores. It's very, very thin. And there are some stores you can buy it in the United States. I think one of them is, is Ecstasy Craft. I'll look and make sure I put the link below of where you can find them. But and it really adds a lot of texture and beautiful depth to anything you put it on. I wanted to make a tag that's going to be something that is simple but pretty. And I'm just going to start out with a plain piece of cardstock that is five and a half inches long by three and a quarter inches wide. So it's nothing spectacular, just as I said, just a piece of cardstock. And I have this piece of cardboard that is really messy. I apologize for that, but that's what I'm doing my coloring on. And I figured it would be easier than um, showing you on something that I could really make a mess out of. One of the things that's important about Foam Iran is knowing that you can use a lot of different coloring mediums on it. I used alcohol markers and regular dye-based ink on these. And the more you color, this is the same Gina K Cherry Red ink as this. The only difference is, is I put more coats on. And this one, I added a little bit of alcohol marker when you do anything with foam Iran, you have to remember that it's a very absorbent medium. So it will take whatever you put on it, but it'll also uh, take as little as you put on too. And so let me show you the difference. I'm going to start out with one of these I cut out. Oh, by the way, my dies were really sweet, sent to me from In Love Arts. They're going to give you a 20% off coupon code if you'd like one. And it comes the set comes with a whole bunch of really great poinsettia type flowers or pieces and it also comes with a, a snowflake and these longer fronds and um, I only cut out the ones that would make the poinsettia and the and the bow because I wanted to make it something that I could make kind of um, uh, I'll just call it a frond with. I don't know. So let me show you how you do this. I'm going to just use a regular blending brush. You can start off the paper or off the foam or you can start on the foam. It's really, it's all up to you. And all I did, I'm going to put it in the red area. All I did is I just went like this with mine. The way I got the lighter one is once this brush was worn out of of the uh, ink. I just went to the next flower and that's how I got it. But let's say you want this one to be darker. All you need to do is just go after it again. And you can continue to make this darker as long as you keep adding layers. And the thing I like about it is that once you let this dry, you can also use my silicone, that Kalal glue that I told you about that you could also use a silicone bathtub caulk that you could find in any hardware store that's clear. You want to make sure you get clear because it might show through your layers. Um, anyway, mine looks like this. The one that I linked in the last video that I found at Home Depot even came with uh, an applicator, which was really nice. So you didn't have to worry about having a lot come out of the end of your tube. Okay, so this is what we'll call the medium color. This is my lightest color, all with the same ink. Same with this. This is the lightest. This is the darker one. I could probably make this one darker. Let's give it a whirl, see how dark we can make it. Actually, I don't want it to be much darker because I want this one that I did the um, alcohol ink on to be my top layer. But I am going to layer these bows, so three is fine. And I want to make sure that my middle bow is darker than my my uh, bottom bow because I want the I want it to be like this so that when it lays that you can see a difference but I think that light one is a little bit too light so I'm going to give it another little bit of a zhuzh 
so simple, but has such a cool impact on this foam. All right, so that's those. As I said, okay, let's say I want to make the middle one. This is my middle one that I just played with. I'm going to make it darker. Just want to make sure I had the right side. All you have to do, go back in, hit it again. The other thing I found, and I'll show you this when we get to green, is that you can actually make your edges uh, darker. So you can have, um, you know how you would do with alcohol markers, how you'd have like a light, a medium, and a dark tone? You can do that with this. And I'm going to show you that with the green layer. I already did this one, and I used this, <clears throat> excuse me, um, artichoke almost artichoke always artichoke always artichoke it's an old stampin up ink i don't even know if it's still made but you know i never get rid of my inks if i have it and i have the reinker i just keep using them okay so i already used this same ink on this um leaf what i did when i played with it and i thought this was really fun is if you hold on to it and just kind of hit the edge of the leaves you can actually get the outer part of the leaves with a darker blend. I'm gonna see if I can do a good enough job that you can see it this time. We can also do that with um, darker ink and I'm gonna try that too so you can see it all. But I want you to see this first so you can see how cool one color of ink can um, make one of these. Down the bottom. I don't know, can, can you see, let me stick it on my hand, can you see the edge of that leaf in particular, how it's got a dark edge, and this one, it's got a dark edge, I think that's really cool, so we're going to play more with that, but I'm going to do that with the uh, distress inks I got out, I figured I could get more of those on my counter, I also, I need to color another one of these so that I have another one that's the same color family so that when I lay them across from each other they all look similar. I should have not closed that up, huh? <clears throat> but I'm still going to add more ink to these of the uh, distressed ones. I'm not, you know how a lot of people use that traditional Christmas green for their um, leaves and things they use it on their cards at Christmas time. It's more of a bold green. I'm not into that color, so I still stick to the greens I would normally use when I color leaves. So if you're wondering why I don't use those more like evergreeny colors, because I don't dig them that much. Okay, let me see if I got enough green on that. Get one more brush through the center. All right. I'm going to go with some other greens now. I did get out one brighter green because I wanted to show you another thing you can do. You can, and I'm using these cubes on purpose, you can take your cube, this is kind of a tedious thing, but you can do it, and just go, like, touch the edge. You'll see, if you can't see it yet, you'll see it in a second. And then we can blend from here, but you get your ink exactly where you want it. One more leaf and then I'm and I can show it to you. Can you see the green on the edges of that leaf? And then all you'd have to do to make it less uh, noticeable or blend it a little bit better is to just do that. Again, I'm not crazy about that it's that was mowed lawn. I'm more of a forest moss kind of girl. So let's do forest moss. And this time I'm gonna put it on top of the other cube so that I have something that I can hold easier. I think I showed you this in another video. Maybe I didn't. Okay, we're going to go around the edges with this darker mossy color. Okay, so there's, hopefully you can see that. Can you see how cool that shading is on that? So then I'm going to do it on this side. Okay, I'm going to go over that, center this with a little bit of this green too. I don't want a ton of it on there, so I'm going to kind of blend it out. But I do want to make the um, 
middle of my leaves a little bit more of that same color if I can get them to be that color. See the difference between that one? Can you see the shading? Hopefully you can. Sorry about the mat being so dirty, but I do think you can see the edges of the one on the left being greener. Here's another thing you, we can use, and I think these will work really well. They're kind of like a makeup eye, um, an eyeshadow brush. And I'm just going to go around the edges. This will be a lot easier, I think. Don't you? You're probably going, why didn't you think of that to begin with, Sandy? I don't know why I didn't think of it to begin with. I should have. Making sure I hit the edges as well as I can. That one got a lot. Those dies cut these this foam no problem. I wasn't sure because you know you never know when you get dies you never know if something if it'll cut certain materials or not and they did a, it did a great job of cutting it. I was happy. So here's where we stand right now. And just add some to the top to make them blend in the rest of the way. And if you do just hit the edges, like let me let, let me show you this. If you just take your sponge and you just kind of like go over the edges like that, you can really hit your edges and get a really nice look to this. Like right now, half my flat, my leaves are really dark. I might leave that like that. That's kind of cool. I'm going to do the other one the same way. I'm just going to go over this side of them. And get really dark on one side, not so dark on the other. Kind of cool looking. Hopefully you think so too. All right, so that's the, the big leaves. Now, I have these individual little leaves that... Um, I'm going to tuck around my poinsettia, 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 however you want me to say it, I'll say it for you. Um, but these leaves, <clears throat> I think, are going to be fun to color in a bunch of different colors, you know, not, not all the same color. I'm going to start with ice spruce. If I didn't say before, that was forest moss, the dark color I used. And the one I started with before that was mowed lawn that I didn't like. And then we're going to go with this ice spruce on the brush that's already dirty. We're just going to check it out, see what we think of the two colors together. There's the iced moss spruce. Did I say moss? Oh, jeepers creepers. Whatever I said, it was probably wrong. This is iced spruce. We're going to shoot a, shoot a few of those on with this color. And then I'm going to add more colors to these as we go. Those aren't bad. I think they blend fine with these. Then we have one more of these poinsettias that I wanted to play with a little bit more. And with this one, what my plan is, is I'm going to get it. Oh yeah, it's going to be one of those moments where I'm going to make a big mess. I'm going to take it and I'm going to lay it face down or face up. Let me see. Face down right in my ink pad and I'm just going to push on it. I want this to be as red as we can get it to be from you know of the colors that we have so far. We don't want it to be kind of red, we want it to be super red. And then I'm going to add a little bit more to it. Okay, when you look at them, here's our Light, lightest, our medium one, and now our super dark. So we've got a super dark one, which makes me happy. All right, let me go wash my hands, and I'll be back in a second, and we'll see if we can get this bad boy put together. Before I go any further, I think I want to put a little background paper on my um, tag. We're going to call it a tag. I thought I would just take some of this paper, Cut it to the same size, glue it together. I just wanted to make sure that my tag was a little bit um, more sturdy than just a piece of cardstock, so that's why I'm gluing this to it. I just want to, you know, just have a little bit more sturdy. And then I'm gonna cut it, cut the top of the tag so that it looks like a tag. I'm gonna take a ruler. 
and make a couple marks on this so that you can see the easiest way to do this if you don't have a tag punch. I have a tag punch, but if you don't, I don't want you to have to worry and go, how do I do that? So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm just going to put it so it's about a half an inch from the top. I'm going to put a little mark on the edge and then I'm going to go a half an inch in from the top like that. Make another little mark. All right. Now, that was the hardest part. So then all you're going to do is you're going to take your scissors and it's better if you have some long bladed scissors for this because when you cut with short blade scissors sometimes you fumble on the end. So I'm just going to connect my two pieces and I'm just going to snip that off. Then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to lay it over here on the other side in the same exact spot. You're going to hold it in place. Yeah, we'll see if I can do this. You know how my skill set at holding on to things is poor. And then I'm going to take it off and I'm just going to cut it. They should be the same same um, size. And I'm going to hold my two pieces up together so you can see them. And they're, they're pretty close to the same size. So not bad. If you don't like it, if you think like, if you think your left side needs to be trimmed down a little bit, all you have to do is just kind of do a quick like that. And then, you know, you, you fixed it if, if that, if that was bugging you, if it wasn't bugging you, just let it go. Then you just need a hole punch. And I have this one that came, I think it came with my laminator, to be honest with you. I'm not really sure where I got it, but it's a cool one. It's, it's like, um, I don't know, it's just a, it's just a mighty little, it's just a mighty little hole punch. It's always hard to tell where the hole punch is though on it because it's, you know, one of those things. Okay, so we're ready with that. Now it's time to put our idea together. <clears throat> my thinking is, is I'm going to want to have these overlap something like that. I'm not going to put anything under those because as far as silicone, any kind of um, raised effect, because I think these are going to be the thing that just grounds everything. I know you're thinking to yourself, does Sandy even know what she's talking about? No, I don't. You know me. I just talk. Okay, so I'm just going to put that piece there. Pick this one back up. Um, the, my, only, my only goal on these is to make sure that they mostly hit the, hit the card. I don't, I don't want them to go off the sides if I can avoid it. And I'm just adding some glue. Same thing. We're going to just kind of lay it like that. And then my poinsettias are going to be focused in that center area. Then, geez, I got stuff everywhere, don't I? So then let me show you what I, what else you can do with foam around. And this is one of the fun things. If you have any of these stylus balls and you're going to want one that's not super small, not like you would use with your scoreboard, not that little thin, like, like these tips. These are t these ones right here. That's too small. You need something that's got some substance and you need a big piece of thicker foam. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add some, I'm going to call it life to the rest of our pieces here. I'm going to, I know you're thinking, why can't she just leave that big messy paper there the whole time? That would be so much fun if we could just keep watching that. No, I'm going to get rid of it because, you know, sooner or later, all good things must come to an end. So, let's start with our poinsettia. And I'm going to start with the one that's going to be on the bottom because we're going from lightest to darkest in my plan. And what I'm going to start with is I'm going to take the big ball and I'm going to rub in the center. Well, maybe I'll use a smaller ball. Because it's a little bit on the wet side, it doesn't want to play with me. I'm just going to kind of rub the center 
and when you rub the center of these, they start to become more like a cup shape, which is cool. The other thing you can do is you can take and rub from the back. Now this is from the back. That's too big. I have to use one of these. You rub it like this and the leaves will start to point toward you down. And then that makes it so that you have even more dimension on your flower. We're going to play with this a few times until we get something I like. And I'm going to push the center again. If my foam was thicker, I think I'd have better result. I had some thicker foam, but I don't know what I did with it. Okay, let's go on to the next one. I think I'm going to use a different size ball. Maybe this one. I bought my set of these from McGill Incorporated. I think I got them at a craft show, but you can get them on Amazon. You can get them at anywhere. I think they normally sell these with like clay tools, but I could be lying about that. You know, I have a tendency to make things up. I just keep rubbing some of these so we can get some dimension. The other thing that's cool about it is when you do this, those little slits in the center, they open up more. And I think that's fun too. All right, I'm going to go back to the center and see if I can get this to have more dimension in the center. And then our very last one. This one I don't think I'm going to do that with the leaves on. I think I'm just going to play with everything from the front and just make the leaves kind of cupped from the front. You can always push them back down if you don't like them. It's not a big, it's not going to be a crisis either way. Then with these leaves, we've got all these little ones. I'm going to play with them from the back because I want them to kind of have a, a shape like that. Can you see that shape? Hopefully you can. I'll flip them all over so that we can get them all to do that. We just want them to have a little bit of a cup to them. I might add more um, color to these green ones before we put them on there. But for now, we're just going to play with them. Then I have... I. I, to be honest with you, I don't know that I love these little stamen. I think instead I have these little balls. We'll call them balls. They're beads of some kind. I don't even know where I got them, but I've had them for a while. So I think we'll use those instead. I don't know yet if I love the the um, um, bow enough to do anything with it, to put it on. But I'm going to push the center of it. And then do something with the edges of the, maybe I'll do those the other way, maybe go this way with them, so that they f form outward. It's all in how you want to do with it. Here's the cool thing about this. Look how you can make the um, bottom of the bow curl up. See, all you have to do is do this, and the bottom just curls up. That's fun, isn't it? Come on. You know you're thinking it's fun. So if we decide, I'm going to kind of set this up so that we know what it looks like. If we decide that this bow is going to go like there, and then the buddy's going to go on top of it, and this one's going to go on top of it, let's assume it's going to go there. I haven't decided yet if, I think, I, maybe I want three different poinsettias. What do you think? I'm not crazy about that light one. It just seems like it keeps getting lighter and lighter and lighter and making me crazy. Add a little bit more red to this. And I think I'll add a little bit more green to those leaves. And then we'll put this together. Where did I put the brush? Do you see it? Anybody see those brushes? Right there. Right in front of me. Yeah, uh-huh. Right there. Good work, Sandy. This one just didn't seem to have much pizzazz. I think we're okay with those. The really, really dark red one, if I wanted to make it lighter, all I'd have to do is, because these are distressing, so I could just spray it and the water would um, activate and it would be um, lighter. <laughs> I forgot the word lighter. Ah. 
Okay, let's decide. I'm going to put our leaves down, but I need to make sure. I want to put everything down. I just kind of put them in place to think about them, but I need to whew, make sure I put enough of the glue underneath each one. I'm going to put a big gob under that. Put that right there. Now keep in mind, when you lay these down, the amount of glue you have under them, that amount of glue is going to hold it that far off of the ground or off of the project. I have these little beads, but they don't want to stay where I glued them. That's annoying, to be honest with you. I really thought they would stay in place. You know, they've got glue all over them. Why aren't they staying? I don't know. And here's how I'm going to put the beads on this. I'm going to put it into like a cup shape. And just kind of... Do that. And then I took my scissors. The last time how I did it was I took my scissors and kind of pushed the glue and the beads around each other. The glue should dry clear, so that shouldn't be a problem. Before this dries, you can't push it down, the glue. You have to make sure the glue is as high as you want it to be now. If you push it now, you're going to end up having, um, your, your glue is going to end up flattening on your leaves. So you don't, you got to, you know, think about that now. Do you want it that high? If you don't, push it down a little. If you, if you want it that high, don't push it down. And once it's dry, it'll be set that at that height. This is a messy job if you're messy like me. If you're not messy like me, it probably isn't a messy job, but frankly, let's face it, we all know I'm messy. All right, this one, it seems like its little, its little center is better than the other two for some reason. I'm still going to add more beads to it because I like those. I like to have a lot of those beads in the middle and I like to make a big mess with beads. Again, I, I'm sure you can see that I've got um, my beads are not in the center. So you just need to take your scissors or something that you can move everything with so you get a tighter, a tighter center ball. I don't know about you, but I don't really think I need the, the bow. I could show you what the bow would look like glued together so you, so you have an idea. I'm going to put a little dollop of glue. This is when it would be nice to have that syringe that I don't know what I did with that came with this set. It's the first one. Then you're going to take the second one. Don't push it. Just set it. What's that? Set it and forget it. Ron Popeil. Anybody remember him? We're going to let that dry and then we'll decide if we're going to do anything with the bow or not. At this point I'm not in love with the bow. But I do like this. I think it's looking nice. I want to move my beads again to make sure they're in the center of each of these flowers if I can. All right. We're going to let this dry, and then when we come back, you'll get to see what it looks like finished. So here they are finished. What I did with the truck is I just took some of my old diamonds that I had left over from diamond paintings, and I just glued them all over using a really fun glue pen that right now... Oh, there it is. It's a Zig two-way glue pen it works really good where you just you just put the dots down and then they change color and that's when you know it's ready to glue the to put things on them and, and everything adhered really well and then 
I wasn't sure about the bow, as I said before, so I left it off. I actually like it better, I think, without the bow, but you guys could, you could be the, the, the polls are open. You could vote if you think it should, needs a bow. We could glue that bow on, but, um, I thought these were really fun. I love these die sets. I thought they had so much versatility. You could use the the um, leaves and the fauna part of this all year round. There's also a bell that I never used. And then on the Santa set, you could just use the truck and um, make it put a surfboard on the top. I actually thought this white part, this white die, or well, I made it white. This die right here, I thought that might be uh, like a surfboard, but you couldn't make it as a surfboard and lay it on the top of your truck in the summer if you wanted to do it that way. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that, and please check out the coupon code for In Love Arts. They have some great things there. Such nice people. Merry Christmas to all of you. I don't know if this will be my last video before Christmas, but if it is, then I hope all of you have a really, really nice Christmas and a very, very happy and healthy 2022. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.